Good morning. Welcome to First Local AM Edition on Monday, May the 31st. It's very last day of May. Cannot believe May has gone by already. You're with mm -hmm. Heidi and Colette yes. on this glorious Monday morning. And we're going to have uh, Father Nature appear shortly and let us know what the week's going to look like. Just wanted to acknowledge that we are wearing orange today to acknowledge um, awareness for residential schools in uh, Canada. Today is Orange Shirt Day, so if you've got an orange shirt and you're looking for something to wear, put on some orange and support um, the Indigenous communities and help raise awareness. Mm -hmm. How was your weekend? I was uh, unusually busy. Oh. You know, given that there's really not <laughs> anything that not you're supposed to, to be doing. Mm, nice. um, you know, get some nice walks in, you know, kind of hung with my kids. Uh, That's nice. Did a good deed here and there, you know, Look I mean, the usual. Oh, I know, right? Hi. Good, good, good. Well, we've had some more had another fire over the weekend and uh, some stuff that happened at Al's Pub and I'm not going to start with Al's Pub and you've got that fire update or no I have the fire update you have the APH update I have the APH update yeah okay um Algoma Public or did you want no no go next <laughs> so Algoma Public Health Which is advising about potential high-risk exposure to COVID-19 um, this has to do with workers of the Baffinland Mary River Mine, which is located on Baffin Island, Nunavut, mm -hmm. um, of a potentially high-risk exposure to COVID-19. So anyone who worked at the Baffin Island, uh, or the Baffinland, sorry, the Baffinland Mary River Mine since April 30th, 2021, is at risk of exposure. So anybody within the Algoma Public Health region who has returned from the Mary River Mine site since April 30th is asked to immediately self-isolate and contact Algoma Public Health for further information at 705-759-5404 or toll-free 866-892-0172 at extension 5404. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so residents were displaced from former Al's Pub yesterday morning. Uh, Sioux Fire Services were dispatched to the former Al's Pub in Jamestown for the sound of alarms ringing inside the building. Upon arrival, Fire Services struggled to get into the building and had to access it from a basement window. After this point, it was unknown at, the, at that time what transpired, but Sioux Police Services were called to the scene. Um, earlier, like later on in that afternoon, local residents had mixed feelings about the developments as one of the drug hotspots areas, but Red Cross has been contacted to help individuals displaced by the actions taken. Sue Online has reached out to both the fire services and police services in our city mm -hmm. for explanations and we're trying to locate the landlord of the property as well for a comment. Uh, at the time of publishing, no one responded to the uh, inquiries. So Dan Gray is following up on this and we'll have more for you throughout the day. And speaking of more, let's go over to Craig Huckerby <laughs> for the weather. Isn't that extra? Good morning, Craig. <laughs> and thank you very extra. much. Hope you had a great weekend. Had to cover the flowers Saturday night because of a slight chance of frost. It went down to one, minus 1 1.2 degrees Sunday morning just for about an hour. So hopefully you were able to cover your flowers and protect them. Um, but we don't see any cold overnight temperatures lasting now uh, at all for the next uh, several weeks actually uh, actually for the, probably the summer we are done with those negative temperatures we'll take a look outside and show you what kind of day we're setting up for it's not bad out there we have a mix of sun and cloud mainly cloudy conditions today as uh, we do see a system out to the west that's trying to come in I'll get to that in the three-day forecast coming up but today we should be very comfortable with these temperatures of 22 degrees for the next several days before we start bumping up those temperatures uh, towards the weekend. So let's take a look now at the 12 hour forecast and this is what we look like uh, for your morning. A mix of sun and cloud. We're going to cloud over a little more this afternoon if we start seeing those uh, that system come in from the west. Uh, temperatures though at 22 degrees so that's not bad and your evening we should see mainly cloudy conditions for our evening but temperatures still very nice and today looks like probably the worst looking day of the week and it's not even looking all that bad uh, the rest of the week we are looking really nice and i'll get to that on the three-day forecast coming up well speaking of looking good isn't the weather dude looking pretty good in his orange shirt today good Craig's job Craig. looking sharp uh -huh. not everybody can pull orange off yes i'm, I'm not too sure say. i can either yeah. but <laughs> but here we are we have to we uh we would like just to, again, just to acknowledge that we are wearing orange in support of our Indigenous communities and uh, raising awareness about our residential schools throughout Canada, which we're going to have more on throughout the show. 
So there was a residential fire in the West End again this morning, <clears throat> early morning, 4.20 actually in the morning. Uh, Sioux Fire Services responded to a two-story house fire. Upon arriving in the 500 block of Brunswick Avenue, fire crews encountered heavy smoke conditions coming from the second floor. All four pumpers and the platoon chief were in attendance. Crews from pumper two quickly moved inside the second floor to put out the blaze. Second line was closed at the corner of Brunswick Avenue and second line near Farwell Terrace. As fire crews were required to run the high pressure hose from a hydrant near the Market Mall. Police attended the scene to help the traffic control and paramedics were kept nearby on standby. PUC and Enbridge were also called to shut down the utilities to the home. Mm -hmm. Red Cross will be helping out with the individuals displaced by the fire. There appeared to be no injuries as everyone was reported to be out of the home. The cause of the fire is currently under investigation and once we receive more from our fire services, we'll have that posted to online.com. Another fire in the city. Just, I'm not even sure what's happening anymore. I mean, there's only so <coughs> many words you can apply yeah. to a situation that seems to want to recur. Um, we skipped over the COVID numbers and I, I want to make a point of coming back to them because I did some research this morning and I don't think there's been a single new confirmed yeah. case over the weekend. Yeah. Um, rolling totals, the number of confirmed cases is static at 392. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. Uh, we have, you know what, and the number of tests have gone up. We have administered 144,153 tests, confirmed staying at 392. Active cases have come down by three, so we're looking at... Um, only 18 active cases. Uh, one person has been released from hospital, an Algoma resident. So we have five people in hospital, two residents of Algoma, three from outside of the region, 374 resolved cases, and two more cases screened positive for variants of concern, bringing that total to 99. Well yeah. then. Yeah. Excuse me, I was taking a sip of my coffee. Because you're usually longer, so I thought... Like, <laughs> Okay. Right. I mean, you know, I mean, like, I, I just I'm felt sorry. that there should be some, some fanfare, some applause. Absolutely. You know, I keep pushing, you know, our production team to get us some no. canned laughter. Oh, I, oh, there you go. <laughs> and now I'm done. I so know. you missed it, Mike. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As we were discussing earlier in the show, it is Orange Shirt Day. Um, there was a horrible uh, story that came out of Kamloops, British Columbia, on Friday with regards to 215. Yes. Um, graves uh, dug up of uh, many of them children and there's been a plethora of stories all weekend with regards to that yeah. and just the domino effect and other areas so now the they are calling for all residential school sites to be checked in Canada yes when you know this the article that we posted online is just it, it's brought back a lot of horrible memories for those who attended the residential schools um, the government is going to have to get on this and start, you know, providing numbers and doing their their job and figuring out what's going on. And we watched a documentary on the weekend called Muffins for Grannies, actually. Okay. And it's um, it's a really interesting YouTube. I found it on YouTube, or I was told about it on YouTube. Okay. And it just has the actual children who were taken from their home, right, sent to these schools. And the damage that it has done because of that, you know, <clears throat> and the parents did not have a choice but to send their kids or to make their kids go. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission states that it's difficult to place an exact figure on how many residential schools operated in Canada. Super, uh, Supernit, who is a Métis and a descendant of the First Nation of a First Nations and anthropology professor at the University of Alberta. She and her team used ground penetrating radar equipment to help Indigenous communities survey burial grounds across the prairies. Students, um, it did, the, post, the post that's on our website just goes into the deep emotions and feelings that it's stirring with regards to this horrible incident that came out of BC. Yeah. Uh, and clearly there are several more residential schools in this country that need to be checked out of respect for our Indigenous uh, people. Yeah. Well, and, and to that end, I mean, at the local level, you know, the the effects are, are being recognized. Um, there is 
um, I, I, I guess spontaneous wouldn't be uh, the right word, but you know, like a, certainly a, a response at the local level occurring at at uh, at the Shingwok. Yeah. Um, there has been uh, an evolving uh, memorial, if you will, um, having to do with people placing various offerings, be it tobacco. Um, most notably, there have been a significant number of uh, children's shoes mm -hmm. um, meant to acknowledge and represent you know those children who were taken the lives that were forever altered the lives that were lost um, Josie Fegan, um, our, our very talented reporter, um, has done a great job of, of monitoring this, uh, this evolving situation. Mm -hmm. She's been working collaboratively with Jasmine Surrett as well as Celeste Maurer. Mm -hmm. um, Jasmine being from uh, Rankin, yep. uh, Celeste being from Beaver House First Nation. Um, so, you know, the choice today, I think, to wear orange is in some way, you know, meant to show that that solidarity and yep. that that recognition that these these events did happen. Um, yes. They were horrific, um, and as you know, more will be discovered now without any doubt. Um, I think the onus is on us to really kind of show an openness to you know the historical events as they occurred so yeah absolutely and there is a big social media wave going on right now calling for all residential schools yeah. in our country to be to be looked into and uh, with every right I do believe that they have to well, call for that option. and I think that like you know attributing it as just history is really kind of doing it a disservice because you know statistically what Josie has in her article here is mm -hmm. that the last residential school was actually open until 1996 that's the part that I can't yeah. grasp uh, well, there's a lot of parts of this whole story that I can't grasp but uh, the fact that this was up and going until the early 90s is, is ridiculous and yeah sickening and upsetting and <clears throat> also the fact the uh, stats around it too are one in 50 they don't even know if the numbers that they have are exact because they don't even have the proper names or data on yeah. those children who or those people who attended residential schools without any data on them so yeah. the numbers are astronomical and um, I think our federal government needs to get on this ASAP and the Prime Minister should definitely be coming out today with some type of announcement and apology. We will be back. We do have more information with regards to some newly discovered glaciers in Mars and Northern Ontario First Nation declares a state of emergency over a COVID-19 outbreak. We will be back with more Heidi Collette and a lot of interesting stories for you. First Local, supported by... YDoc Detailing. Call YDoc Detailing at 249-356-6688 to book an appointment for detailing or paint correction services today. As much as we love the summer sun and the warmth it brings, too much of a good thing can be bad for your health. Extreme heat can be dangerous, especially for the elderly, the very young, those with chronic illnesses, and those who work outdoors. Prepare for the summer heat. Here are a few ways that you can stay healthy in the heat this summer. Check the forecast to know when to take extra care. Find a cool place like an air-conditioned location. Keep cool in the shade, like the shade of a tree. Make sure to drink plenty of water, especially if you're working outdoors or exercising outdoors. If you don't protect yourself from the heat, you could suffer from heat exhaustion or heat stroke. Find out more about how to stay healthy in the heat at canada.ca slash health. A message from the Government of Canada. Leonard Thompson, 13 years old, diabetes mellitus, 65 pounds. Starve the child to let them live. The treatment's as cruel as the disease. It's a death sentence. Dr. Banting. This could be it. He's the first to receive this trial. But will it save him? It's not pure enough. So we try again. And again. And again. Before the discovery of insulin, diabetes was a death sentence. Banting, Best, Collop, and McLeod's breakthrough has saved millions of lives. Leonard Thompson's was the first.
Good morning and welcome back to First Local Mornings with Colette and Heidi. It is Monday, May 31st. We have pretty much kicked May to the curb. See you later, Fantastic. mate. Fantastic. Let's bring on the summer. Let's get this uh, stuff started. As we said, it's the summer of Heidi and Colette. We <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it is. It's going to be. Okay, what else do we have today? Let's talk about the two charged under the Reopening Ontario Act, oh. shall we? On May the 29th, officers attended an illegal gathering held at Bellevue Park hmm. to ensure it yep. remained peaceful and to investigate the gathering and those who were participating. The investigation identified two people as having organized the illegal gathering, and when you organize it, that's a $10,000 ticket right there. One person from Springwater Township, Ontario, and one person from Perth, Ontario, were charged under the Reopening Act. A conviction for organizing this gathering, a minimum of $10,000. No. This investigation into the legal gathering is ongoing, and we will have more as we find out more from Dan Gray and our police services, who are definitely on top of outside gatherings that are breaking the uh, Reopening Act laws. Yep. Well, and you just think, you know, I mean, at this point, we're pretty close to the expiry date anyway. Um, I, know, I agree. I'm just, you know, okay, so you've made your point, you know, and, and I'm not trying to minimize anybody's right to do what they have to do. I'm just saying, like, yeah. uh, I don't know. I, I don't know either. How you got an extra 10 grand? Do it up. $10,000. Yep. No, I don't. Yep. Anyway, okay, over to you, lady. If I had 10 grand, I'd do more than throw a party in the park, I no. gotta say that. <laughs> So, four arrested at gunpoint on E Street. So this took place oh, on yeah. Friday, mm -hmm. Friday afternoon. So picture me after lunch, kind of Hi. sitting here doing my little thing. There's a work and duk, 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 and I'm like, somebody sends a picture in our, know, in our group chat, and I was like, oh no, what am I looking at? I what know. am I? Do you have it? Yeah. Here okay, is. so you're gonna see. So this is what I was looking at. You yeah. know, and you can see the person at the lower part of yeah. the picture. And I'm like, is that blood? What is happening? I what, don't what, know. what am I even looking at I here? I will say though too, like it was right at the time of the day when I was done for the day. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, abort, abort, uh, clear the door. <laughs> I'm out of like, here. I can't. Last week was heavy duty. Yeah. With all the news that was coming through. I'm like, we need out. Anyways, so now not, we're reporting it though. <laughs> well, not a lot really is known. I no. mean, it, as in a situation like that, you know, it's uh, the police are obviously going to be, you know, somewhat limited in what they're able to share. Yeah. So so they don't compromise the integrity of the investigation. Oh, look at you go. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I know, He's right? Up so oh, fast. Grasp the pebble. I've She's grasped the pebble. Okay, so around 1 p.m. <coughs> on Friday, high, you know, officers conducted a high-risk arrest in the 0 to 100 block of East Street. Mm -hmm. Four people were, in fact, arrested. Part of a subsequent search of the area of arrest uh, had officers locating a loaded firearm, a prohibited weapon, and a quantity of controlled substances. So again, mm -hmm. this situation is ongoing and further details will be released as they come available. So. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I, do, I, I know what we talked about. Well, you do know what's going on. I just told you. Well, I mean, in <laughs> and like. Nah, nah, nah. I I'm mean, <laughs> making it all up. Sassy. Um. You are sassy. I am sassy. It's okay, so am I. The, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I just mean like it just seems like everybody's just, uh, I don't know. Bored? I, sassy, feisty. Yeah. I think I'm just this side of snidey. Snide? Oh, you're not snidey today. I'm getting there. Hi, snidey, I'm Heidi. getting there. The return of snidey, snidey. Heidi. Snidey. One o'clock p.m. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on to some more uh, news in uh, our di Indigenous communities. You'll also recall we did celebrate the Red Dress Day, okay. which was for missing and murdered Indigenous women and children's spirit too. Mm -hmm. um, Indigenous women must, a, a new article was put out this weekend with regards to how Indigenous women must be squarely at the forefront of efforts to combat a national tragedy of violence against women and a new Ontario government report asserts this. The province's response to the national inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls offers a roadmap for tackling an issue that has inflicted horrors on countries, uh, the lives of for generations. Um, in a message accompanying the report, Jill Dunlop, who is the Associate Minister of Children and Women's Issues here in Ontario, and Indigenous Affairs Minister Greg Rickford 
that's our federal level, said the tragedies of the past cannot be undone, but things can and must change. And I don't think there's a better way to say that with regards to what's going on with residential schools as well as um, our missing and and murdered Indigenous women and girls. The report lays out six pathways, including to safety and justice, while ensuring Indigenous women maintain a leadership role in identifying solutions. The document was built on advice from the Indigenous Women's Advisory Council set up last year. Okay. Which is actually a great um, council if you ever want more information to go to visit your Indigenous Women's Advisory Council. Um, they do have a lot of information there and it's and it's uh, it's very informative. Cora Surratt, co-chair woman of the council, said in an interview Friday that the new framework was a good starting point for tackling an enormous problem on the ground. What's most heartening, she said, is how Indigenous women previously erased from conversations about discrimination and violence against them were now being heard. Their singular expertise, she says, was now recognized. This is posted to our website, foodonline.com. Please go and read that today. Okay. Over to you, beautiful lady. All right. Well... Thank you. Um, So we were talking last week about, you know, there's been a lot of discussion that as numbers decline, um, you know, the conversations about, uh, you know, the step-by-step reopening of the province. Um, But, you know, when that plan, such as it is, was released, no real discussion about what's happening as far as schools, because both Colette and I have been fairly candid in sharing our struggles with the whole online learning model, especially when you're dealing with the younger, the younger set. Uh, you know, and I would put that marker probably at about maybe grade five and under. Yeah, that's where I we mean, both fall under, right? Yeah. yeah. Sophia, you know, my elder, she tends to kind of, she does her own thing. She's pretty self-directed, but yeah. it's been an ongoing struggle with oh, your Dante. Oh, yeah. I had it last Emma. night. Mommy, tomorrow, I said, don't say it. You've got three or four weeks left. You're attending every day. That's so. right. That's right. I pulled you know. a Heidi last night. <laughs> put your foot down. Put that's it, man. Down. Put Put that on ice. <laughs> anyway, um, so Premier Ford had uh, sent a letter to some 50 interested That's groups, right, yeah, like uh, public fine. health units, yeah. medical community, etc. Um, and he had issued a deadline of this past Friday at 5 p.m. for people to provide their their input on their thoughts as to mm-hmm. what should be happening with the schools. And there has been a response. Uh, the science oh, table. Look. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. I just saw the arrows there making kids walk this way, walk that way. Oh, yeah. It's, it's all I just, very... Sorry to cut you off, but it's just like, oh, man, this is not how our kids should be having their... their no, it's it's their. a very, very different uh, different time for kids, that's for sure. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I didn't, I'm sorry. No, it, it, it's, it, it is... It's, it's startling to see. Yeah. Um, so, in a letter addressed to Premier Doug Ford Saturday, the Ontario COVID-19 Science Advisory Table said that, quote-unquote schools can reopen on a regional basis. The letter said that schools that do reopen should maintain their public health measures vigorously and build on the strategies they have already deployed to limit spread. And we had commented, I mean, like yep. I've been pretty satisfied yep. with, you know, what, what our school had put in place sure. um, and the protocols that they were enforcing. So earlier this week, yeah, so that just goes into Ford. So modeling from the science table suggests that the total increase in COVID-19 cases that would come from school reopening is small. And I had this discussion with yep. Sophia, yeah. you know, cause she was like, well, mom, what if the numbers spike? And I said, yeah, but any any significant spread really can't roll up, especially, particularly in our community. Mm-hmm. Any significant spike in numbers has really had very little to do yep. with the schools, if yep. anything at all. Yep. Um, science table letter called school closures necessary as COVID numbers previously had surged, mm-hmm. but noted the harm it has on both students and their families. So, you know, like it's, it's an awesome responsibility to make these decisions, mm-hmm. to try and weigh the good of you know the mental health of the kids the mm-hmm. physical health of the community so yeah this is an ongoing discussion yeah. particularly with the variants of concern now being you know significantly at play yeah. so we will continue to follow this discussion and bring you the relevant details I do believe he settled on June 14th. He wasn't going to push it anyways. I think I read that over the weekend, but I'm going to look into that a little bit more, that he's not going to send kids back earlier. Well, uh, we'll I mean, 
this close to the end, why, I, you know, or, why? Yeah, no. Um, I but again, like to me, that has to do with the the younger kids who are missing the social component, the social reward of being able to go out and, yeah. and play at recess. Um, yeah. You know, because right now with the online model or the online model, there's there there isn't any of that, obviously. So yeah. Amen to that, sister. Okay, when we come back. Somebody in Atlanta, Canada won the six million dollar lotto, six forty nine. Bet you didn't buy your ticket. And there is a hockey game coming up tonight, so we need to talk about oh, Canadian teams and lifting restrictions. And we're not going to talk about the game that happened over the weekend. We'll be right back after this commercial break. <laughs> First local, supported by James Seaton Mortgage Specialist. Your new home doesn't come with mortgage advice. I do. Call James Seaton Mortgage Specialist, RBC, 705-975-1519. Wow. College already. <laughs> yeah. We gotta go. I love you. I love you too, Daddy. And thanks for... Everything. Gratitude. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Always stay humble and kind. Don't expect a free ride from no one. Don't hold a grudge or a chip, and here's why. Bitterness keeps you from flying. Always stay humble and kind. When I found out, I had cancer. It was the hardest day of my life. But life is bigger than cancer. Welcome back to First Local AM Edition with Heidi and Colette. It is the last day of May, the 31st, on this fine Monday. Craig says it's going to be a beautiful week ahead, so we're looking forward to that. And that today would be the worst day, and when it's actually beautiful out there. So we shall see if he's telling us the truth. Shall we go to him right now to find out if he's Is he ready? Is he ready? Is the princess ready? Over to you, Princess Father Nature. Thanks very much. Well, we're in for a mix of sun and cloud today. Temperature is not bad at around 22 degrees. And in fact, this is going to be the coolest day of the week because we're going to see our temperatures build up during the week. We'll get to that in just a second. Right now, we will take a look at the radar. We do have a, a few systems out to the west that may try to come in late afternoon today. Give us a brief shower, if anything. Uh, other than that, we're looking okay for the next uh, several days. We'll take a look at the temperatures for the, uh, for today, our high 22, 24 in Mackinac, 20 degrees in Thunder Bay, and 14 degrees because they're seeing some rain showers in Wawa. Uh, so they're a little cooler today, but 22 in Timmins and 23 in Sudbury. So this is what we look like for our day today. Here's that boundary that I just told you about. Again, it's very scattered, really not well organized, so it may try to come in later on today. But other than that, we are going to stay with a mix of sun and cloud for most of our week and see our temperatures boost up. In fact, by next weekend, this coming weekend, we're going to start seeing a mini little heat wave develop. So this is what we look like for the next three days, with, uh, starting with today. Uh, mix of sun and cloud, as I said, there is that brief chance of showers rolling in sometime late this afternoon. And if they do, it'll be very short in nature, leaving us with basically cloudy conditions for our evening. For Tuesday, a mix of sun and cloud, 22 degrees, maybe even 24 if we can boost those temperatures up a little bit for Tuesday. And for Wednesday, we're in the mid-20s and a mix of sun and cloud. We're staying in that pattern for the next several days where we don't see a lot of 
major rain systems moving in or storms or anything, just a very mild pattern, but the heat is starting to build up and we will get to that on the seven day forecast coming up at five o'clock. Right now, let's send it right back to Heidi and Colette. Somebody got a little haircut there. He's looking, he's looking all cute in his orange hair. His orange shirt and his nice haircut. Well done, Craig. Well done. Okay, Very factoid. dapper. Rakish, in fact. <laughs> dapper. You look like, you know, if you were on a soap opera, your name would be, I don't know, Cliff. What about Gary? His or doppelganger. Ridge. <laughs> yeah, right? Because he's right? a twin, get it? Okay. Ridge. Do you know? Ridge is a good one. <laughs> Somebody in my life once upon a time dated a guy named <laughs> Ridge. Yeah. And my I, I have you know my aunt down in Toronto and yeah, she's yeah. you know she's of advanced age I'm not permitted to okay. give the specifics but she could okay. never get his name right she always called him Wedge I'm not kidding Wedge. <laughs> like, like you know <laughs> you just nobody likes a wedge, wedge up their butt wedgy, wedge wedgy. wedge okay uh, let's do a fact toy. yeah let's Mike <laughs> yes are you with me <laughs> just do it he'll follow okay today's date May 31st 1678 Oh my God. Yeah, I know. The first Lady Godiva procession. Oh, okay. It celebrated the legend of Lady Godiva's famous nude ride through Coventry Marketplace. Oh, Her husband, nice. Leofric, Leofric, Earl of Mercia, had promised to relieve the Coventry oh. of its heavy taxes if she would ride through the town of Coventry clothed only in her hair. Oh. She issued a proclamation that all persons should stay indoors mm. and shut their windows as she rode. Oh. The term Peeping Tom for a voyeur originates from this legend in which a man named Thomas watched her ride and was immediately struck blind. Wow. Listen, talking about wedgies. <laughs> She's riding that thing with nothing on. Bareback? Bareback. What is that? What? That's what I'm pointing at. Like, look, wedgie, wedgie. Oh. <laughs> She is definitely chafing. She's mm. definitely mm. getting some chafe. Mm. Um, well, thank you for that interesting factoid, and stay tuned with us as we have more factoids That's coming right. your way, as well as social media. Yes. And uh, Start well, the day let, off let's with talk. A naked lady. Let's talk. <laughs> Let's talk about this quickly. And Lotto 649 players in Atlantic Canada should check your tickets if you're watching, because we've got viewers from from the Netherlands and uh, India. So perhaps anybody watching from Atlantic Canada, I'm telling you right now, go check your tickets. Uh, I will take a slight fee for that if you are the winner. One East Coast lottery player owns the winning ticket for the draw's four, $6 million jackpot, while another from the region claimed it into the $1 million draw. Did you buy your ticket? No, she's ticked off. Somebody bought my, somebody won my lotto, but I didn't buy a ticket. Here we go. Say it. <laughs> and with that, we are not going to be bareback going to a commercial on a horsey, but we will be going to a commercial. We'll be right back with some social media. So stay tuned and send us your comments. Thank yes. you very much. And accepting anything from Peeping Toms. Here we go. First Local, supported by Gary Trevinsky, Exit Realty, Lake Superior. Buying a home is a big decision. So is choosing the right agent. Call Gary Trevinsky, broker at Exit Realty, Lake Superior, 705-257-5432. Every day, people in crisis need someone to answer their call for help to let them know they're not alone. Whenever people need someone, the Canadian Red Cross is there, on the phone lines and the front lines, around the world and here at home. But none of it would be possible without people just like you. No matter who you are, you have something to give. You can be that someone with the Canadian Red Cross. Learn more at redcross.ca slash someone. We are at war with a virus. And healthcare troops and first responders are on the front line fighting it every day. Let's join the fight by staying home. Staying home is not a retreat. It's the most brave and aggressive weapon we have against this enemy. Because when we do stay at home, we help prevent overwhelming our hospitals while buying time for our scientists to find the vaccine. And that is how we beat it.
mics are open in queue, which means we're back to the first local morning edition on Monday, May the 31st. Uh -huh. So that means it's time for some social media. Okay. All right. We'll do this in two segments because I think that people need some time oh. to send in their thoughts. Hey, if we're here I've and we're present, say something. All right. Steve Childs. Good morning, Steve. Prancing in with another <laughs> one of his acronyms. Prancing in on a horse naked. <laughs> G-M-E-H-Y-A-H-A-G-W. So good morning, everyone. Hope you all have a great week. Yes. There you go. Yes. And bumper that's stumpers. Only... We should be going on bumper stumpers. Yes. Well, and I've only had this, what? I just finished my second coffee, so. Marilyn Trumbull says, good morning, everyone. And she's got my favorite emoji. And then two cups of coffee, three tulips, and two kitty cats. So good morning, Marilyn. Um, kitty cats, of course, alluding to the great work that she does as a volunteer for the Animal Assistance Aww. Group, affectionately known as TAG. Tag. Margaret McKegg says, good morning all with the little sunshine with the little face in it. Debbie Wanamaker says, good morning. Good morning, Debbie. Debbie Doucette, the Debbies are represented today. Debbie Doucette Debbie. says, good morning all. Have a fantastic day with a cup of coffee, a rainbow, morning, a Debbie. sunshine, a sunflower, a red balloon, a red heart. Oh. Nice. They're always after me, Lucky Charms. Oh, that'd be Lucky Charms. <laughs> okay, Debbie. Oh, there's another Debbie. I'm not no, kidding. Come like on, Triple D. Yep. Uh, Debbie Clayton says good morning. Good morning, good morning Debbie, Debbie Clayton. Clayton. I don't know if I've seen your name no. before, so welcome and thank you for popping in. We're glad to have you. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrew Smith says, have a great day, ladies. Yay, Andy. Thank you. You too. Your Tony says, good morning, everyone. Uh -oh. Hope you had a great weekend. Looking forward to tonight's game. Uh -huh. Go Habs, go. There I'm it assuming, is. I'm assuming that's what the GHG stands for, and he's given us four thumbs up. Got a thumbs up for you too, Tony. I, I'm just gonna. I have to acknowledge this. Uh, the Leaf uh, Montreal game. Uh, Tony, your team deserved to win on the weekend. The Leafs decided not to play until the third period. If that happens again tonight, I'm. I. I just. I have nothing else to say other than. <sighs> crap. Over to you. Oh, Tony. Uh, okay. Uh, also, a shout out to my daughter, Melissa. She celebrated her 32nd birthday Aww. on Sunday. Happy birthday, Melissa. Happy birthday, Melissa. That's nice. Yeah, I hope you had a great day. We've had day. a lot of celebrations in his family I lately. I think so, yeah, because there was his wife's birthday, their anniversary. anniversary, now his daughter's birthday. Yeah. Wow, it's a busy time of year for you. Um, yeah, so happy birthday to you, Melissa. I hope that you had a great day, and it is to be followed by your very best year yet. Um, Giselle says good Monday morning with a little winky smile and three cups of coffee and the sun coming up between two huge mountainous tracts of land. There it is. Yes. Oh, winks for me. Oh, nothing for Mike. No, no winky. You oh, wonder if on. the wink is for you? Yeah. No. Maybe she'll tell me when I get home. No. Do they get to hear this? Are they hearing you right oh, now? Oh, yeah, they're or hearing just me. Like oh, a lucky. Sweet nothing in lucky my ear? viewer. Lucky Giselle gets to hear her husband when he's working. Oh. <laughs> Enaka. 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 She says, good morning, everyone. And that, what? I'm going to say five exclamation points. That's, wow. I, I, I don't even know if I have that in me right now. I'd like to kind of get up there. I, I, you know, I'll see if I can channel it at one o'clock, but thank you. Um, so red heart, sunshine with the face, you know, the cup of coffee and two tulips. So good morning to you, Enaka. Mark Jordan. Hello, Mark. Hello, Mark. <laughs> he says, have a super day, everyone. Oh, that's nice. You know, and with Mark, it can go either way. That could be, you know, the, the uh, height of sarcasm. You may be facetious <laughs> this morning, trying to trigger the snidey, but whatever. <laughs> or snidey was triggered, I think, before the show started. But, well, no, not I'm not saying it. Uh, you did say that. Not yeah, well, <laughs> just this side I'm of snidey. I'm not taking off snidey She's anymore. coming. She's <laughs> present. Her leg is going like this. I know. <laughs> yeah. Jacob Moore, sports analyst. Says, hey, Jacob. Good morning, everyone. It's game seven tonight. Leafs versus Habs. Going to be a close game. Eggs to you, my friend. Eggs to you. Listen, I think I've had a couple years taken off my life in the last two games of these, this series. Oh. Yeah. It's been that much. It's been that touch and go for Colette. Touch and okay. Go. Touch and go. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, Kimberly, good morning all with my favorite emoji, then the sun with the face in it, a bouquet of flowers, a cup of coffee, and a cute little dog 
Rufus Aww. is cuter than this dog. Oh, though. the Rufus Could is be very like cute. I've seen pictures. Yeah. Clear on that point. So, Carl Gray says, "Good morning, everyone. Another week of endless possibilities." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's perfectly said, actually. Yeah, <laughs> the possibilities are literally endless. endless. Okay. Good one, Tom. And Joseph Good Bertrand one, down at Maker hey. North, busily solving problems with 3D printing wizardry, uh -huh. says, Good day. Yes, well, good day to you. <laughs> Throw a shrimp on the bobby. Okay, that's it. Okay, cool. All right, we're going to take a slight break. Like I said, we want to talk about the Northern Ontario First Nation declares a state of emergency yes. over COVID 19. It says COVID 10 outbreak, but I'm pretty sure it's COVID 19. <laughs> Let's change it. Uh, oh, newly no. discovered glaciers on Mars may help humans settle on the red planet one day. Well, men are from Mars and we might send you all there, trust me. We'll be right back after this commercial break. God, has nobody seen... 705 Sports, supported by James Seaton Mortgage Specialist. Your new home doesn't come with mortgage advice. I do. Call James Seaton Mortgage Specialist, RBC, 705-975-1519. Nice is not one place or thing. It's a mosaic, a global village, a pickup game. We pass the puck to be nice. Nice is for a moment, putting down your dystopian novel in a Muskoka chair, opening your eyes knowing this world can be nice. Nice is celebrating traditions and welcoming newcomers in over 200, 200 languages. languages. I say nice, you say... Génial, le français de côte à côte, allant du joual jusqu'au chiac. L'hiver est tellement beau, mais attache ta duc parce qu'il fait frais. That's just like Peter Tales, ketchup, chips, and I'm on bars with their local bakery debating the phrases they clutter cost. Nice is prizing science, the environment, inventions, innovations like insulin, pacemakers, and basketball. Nice is honoring our elders, educating for the future, acknowledging this land, respecting those who've always been here. Génial, c'est la fierté de nos défilés, la gaieté dans nos villages, c'est d'enfin toucher à la coupe, puis goûter au sirop d'érable. Nice is the rock in the Rockies, wide as the prairie sky, as high as Niagara Falls. Hey dude, check out our side. Nice is celebrating by all Desmond and Klondike Kate, Emily Stowe, Rita Joe, and all the women who make this great place nice as an Alberta steak. In Bun Poutine après les bars. Dim sum with family. Arctic char. Kissing the cotto graph. Nice is a secret code we train the world to call us so they visit other places because Canada, nah, it's just nice. nice we the North, we the champs, we the red and the white. We see the rise, not just nice. This is Canada. Nice. 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 <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hmm. Don't click it, Mike. It's a scam. Oh, hi, Voice of Reason. It looks legit. Don't click. Listen to your voice of reason before you act. I deleted it. Canada.ca slash smart can help. Welcome back to First Local Mornings with Heidi and Colette. Um, oh boy. We, okay, I think we should go to the we don't, two shots. Our mics were up a little bit earlier than they should have been there. Okay, so uh, we will talk space about... Space junk. Space junk, yes. Junk. Okay, so a piece, a, allegedly, a piece <laughs> There's the word. of space junk has damaged <clears throat> the International Space Station Canada oh. arm. So, a robotic arm attached to the International Space Station has been hit by a tiny piece of space junk, shrinkage, um, <laughs> resulting in damage to its thermal the blanket the and pool. the boom beneath, okay? So, the component known as Canada Arm, no, Canada Arm 2 remains operational, though the event serves as a shocking reminder of the fact that space junk is now a major problem and has the potential to cause catastrophic damage. So, in a blog post, the Canadian Space Agency, which designed the Canada Arm 2, announced that the damage was first noticed during a routine inspection on May 12th. The piece of debris that hit the ISS was too small to be tracked, yet was traveling fast enough to pierce the metal outer layer of the arm. So the official quote is the Canadarm 2 is continuing to conduct its planned operations. Uh, the damage is limited to a small section of the arm boom and thermal blanket. The arm is currently scheduled to complete a number of tasks, including maneuvering a robot called Dexter into position oh. so that it can replace a faulty power switch box. Oh, or, Dexter. Yeah. 
So there, great. So when we're not quite finished polluting the earth, we're now going to kind of <laughs> step up our game a bit and see what we can do to really screw things up in the atmosphere. Um, so way to go. Um, the yeah. figures are a tapping and the legs are a shaking. Over well, here. you know, at what point do the aliens just come and just take us out? Well, <laughs> like, you know, well, speaking not to spread like mass conspiracy or anything, but really like space junk is now becoming a problem. Well, okay. I don't Good. know if the Martians are going to be too happy to hear this next story, but <laughs> there are some glaciers that have been discovered in Mars, um, <laughs> which may help segue. <laughs> yes. Thank you, ma'am. Which may help humans <laughs> settle on the red planet one day. I don't know if I might go or might send a few people there myself. Total we'll, Recall. Either Total Recall with Ar Total Recall with, recall with Arnie Schwarzenegger. Watch that. Okay, so where am I leaving off there? A new paper published in the journal Icarus, which is kind of funny, isn't that? Because Icarus flew too close to the sun, not to Icarus, Mars. Icarus, yes. Okay, well, yep. this journal Greek is called mythology. Icarus, uh -huh. even though we're talking about Mars, but that's okay. Suggests that there is a unique subsurface ice feature in a location that would be optimal for future explorers of the red planet. Mm. Ideally, human colonies would be located close to the equator, mm. where it is not only more temperate in Mars terms, but also easier for a spacecraft to land and take off. Okay. Satellite observations by orbiters around Mars suggest there is an ice sheet and a flat plane called, oh good God, Arcadia Planitia. Planitia? Yeah. Pla I have yeah. to uh, fact check that word. Sure. At roughly 35 degrees north latitude. It's a site that both NASA and SpaceX are considering for future human exploration. Yeah. A satellite image of the planet. <laughs> New research suggests there's a channel of subsurface ice. You know what? They think they found water on Mars, so we will follow up on that. And uh, and you know what's really the most attractive feature about Mars? Is there's no pollution on it yet. Uh, so hey. Well, yet. Yes. Hey, yes. look at how very clean it is. You very know, entirely much so. devoid of you know Excellent. random space junk or you and know. And if you masks, can, you can use feces. Gloves. You can use your feces to grow potatoes. Matt Damon. Have you seen that movie? No, the Martian? no. Oh yeah, it's a good no, movie. I, have I not. could not believe. You listen, it takes a very good actor to be the only one starring in your show. It's kind of like, well, I don't like Castaway, but it's kind of like the Tom Hanks floating in the water with volleyball. Well Matthew. Said. Uh, well said. Yeah, he just talks to himself and <coughs> potatoes and goes potatoes. It's mainly him in the movie. Anyway, okay. that's 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 your planet for uh, your outer space for today. Okay. Well. Uh, so we did report late, late last week that uh, there was uh, there were a number, thousands in fact, of AstraZeneca shots um, that were set to expire. But now they're going to give them another month oh, at perfect. this point. Yeah. Wait, 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 how can they not expire? Oh, sorry, I guess I should let you read the story. Well, yeah, like, you know, I mean, no, it's, it's a good question. <laughs> and I'm glad you've asked Thank all you that. Very Here's much. your answer. Thank all right. You. <laughs> so Health Canada says it is extending the expiry date for thousands of AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccinations how? by one month. But how can they just change one the date? Month. I know. The federal department says it made the decision to help use up the existing doses and and stress the move is backed by scientific evidence. Okay, so isn't this just kind of like, oh no, the what? cheese is fine, just just scrape the mold yeah. off it. Like just bake it. It'll kill it. <laughs> so Health Canada says the vaccine manufacturer made a submission earlier this week which supported extending the expiry date for two lots of vaccine from May 31st to July 1st. It says that submission included stability and mathematical modeling data that mm. showed the doses would still be safe and effective for seven months rather than the original six. A Health Canada spokesman said there are 49,000 doses across Canada that were previously set to expire on Monday. Yeah. The extension came as a welcome development in Ontario where pharmacies were rushing to exhaust stockpiles of AstraZeneca shots and keep them from going to waste before the old May 31st deadline. This change will ensure that provinces and territories are able to use up their existing inventory and provide Canadian access to much needed doses of the vaccine health Canada said in a statement isn't this just kind of like you can't have any dessert until you clean your plate I'm still not understanding that so deadline okay the the yogurt expires May 31st yes and then you say well we don't want the yogurt to expire May 31st <laughs> but, uh, because we have so many <laughs> what is going on Mike because there are so many yogurts available <laughs> we're just gonna push that date back by another 30 yeah, days no, no, no. Did we say the end of May? No, 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 no. no. We meant July we first. Meant June. <laughs> okay. Well, we're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about the Canadian teams that uh, will need to travel 
to the states with regards to COVID-19 and quarantine and all that fun stuff. And it better be the blue and white that need that, uh, that restriction lifted. We will be right back after this commercial break. 705 Sports, supported by... YDoc Detailing. Call YDoc Detailing at 249-356-6688 to book an appointment for detailing or paint correction services today. COVID-19 <laughs> is a serious health threat. When you touch things like gas pumps, door handles, or someone else's cell phone, you can spread the virus even if you don't have symptoms. Don't put lives at risk. Wash your hands. Stay two meters apart. That's a distance of two arms lengths. And if you're sick, stay home to save lives. A message from the Government of Canada. Wow. College already. <laughs> yeah. We gotta go. I love you. I love you too, Daddy. And thanks for everything. Gratitude. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. It's always close by. You carry it with you. It follows you everywhere. Loss is something that never leaves you. Too many Canadians have to live with the impact of losing a loved one or knowing they're injured for life because of impaired driving. You can help. Donate $45 today to support victims of impaired driving. No alcohol, no drugs, no victims. A message from Mad Canada. <laughs> Welcome back to the, I was going to say the Heidi and Colette show. I don't even know. First local AM edition on Monday morning with Heidi and Colette. We are going to go to Craig and find out what's going on the three day, seven day. Can't remember what I was told to say, but we're going to Craig. That's all I know. <laughs> God. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, today's not uh, looking all that bad whatsoever. We just have to deal with some cloud, but temperatures are very comfortable at 22 for our high today. We'll take a look at the radar. We do have a slight chance of a thunderstorm developing around eight o'clock tonight. We'll take a look at the radar. You can see there's a lot of scattered mess sitting over uh, Lake Superior. That's kind of heading towards the east. So we are gonna see some cloud for sure. Uh, we could see some showers develop around six o'clock tonight and then another little tiny thunderstorm uh, developing for around eight o'clock tonight. So we'll watch that for you. But we'll take a look at the 12 hour forecast for, the, uh, for your day today. Temperatures right now are sitting at 9 degrees. Uh, we're heading towards 22 degrees, as I said, with a mix of sun and cloud, mainly cloudy conditions with some sun thrown in there. And again, we could see a slight little shower develop just around dinner time and then uh, a small little thunderstorm coming in for our evening, but we will watch that and I'll give you a full report on that coming up at 1 o'clock. Right now, let's send it back to Heidi and Colette. Thanks, Craig. We appreciate your very thorough and factual weather forecast yes all right um okay i'm going to talk about the northern ontario first nation declaring a state of emergency Is that okay yes okay our northern ontario first nation has declared a state of emergency okay. as it responds to the covid 19 outbreak long lake for number 58 first nation says that 22 cases were confirmed on friday okay uh, chief D judy desmoulin says the community of 535 people lacks resources to handle the spike in cases she says the First Nation needs outside government assistance to uh, address this outbreak. The community went into lockdown on Thursday, shutting the general store and requiring everyone to shelter in place. A statement says the community is hopeful that vaccinations will help protect people, but raise concerns about youth who have not been vaccinated as of yet. It says the biggest challenge is finding people vaccinated. It says the biggest challenge is finding vaccinated people who can help those who are isolating. So please step up and help this community. Yes. Um, well, the few people popped up, I'll just pop yeah. back into social media for a minute. Then maybe we'll do a fact joint. Then yes. I want to talk about 
some good news with regards to our provincial park oh. parks park. mm. yes so why doc detailing popped up to say have a great monday why doc is one of oh. our one of our awesome. you know I guess you call them sponsors. Absolutely, so, on our commercials. Welcome yes. aboard, Y Doc, and uh, happy to see you. Shout out. Absolutely. Steve Childs, I really have issue with the vaccine, as at first only uh, my. Uh, uh, I don't know. Okay. Um, well, me. he's just talking about how. Okay. At first, only minus 80 or so, and oops, oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, we can ship in a re refrigerated van, then, oh, it can be administered in normal temperatures. Uh -huh. And now, don't worry about the due date, it yeah. will last for however long yeah. we need it to. Agreed, Steve. Mm, Agreed. I know, there's a little bit of a flip-flop, well, several flip-flops actually happening there, so I, I agree. Um, it kind of shakes the, the, the foundation upon which well, we establish our faith. Well, so. yeah, absolutely. I mean, who's going to go say, oh, well, I've got a national genetic vaccine for you. Yeah, no, you well, yeah, I'm sure people are going to be lining up for no, that. Okay. Yeah. Factoid. Cove Fefe. Oh, pardon me. Despite the constant negative press, Cove Fefe, this was a tweet sent <laughs> by former U.S. President Donald Trump. Oh, God. About five hours later, Trump deleted the tweet and sent out another one asking people what they thought Cove Fefe could mean. Yeah. At a press briefing later the same day, White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer stated yeah. that the president and a small group of people know exactly what he meant. No further explanation oh, was on. given during the briefing. Cove Fe. That's right. Stay away from me until I've had my Cove Fe. Well, something to do with coffee and. Yeah, I don't know what else. Uh, did you see that there was only like a thousand likes on there? <laughs> Your following is not so. I don't even think he's allowed on any we get, social media. We get more hits so. on our morning show. <laughs> Way to go, President Trump. All um, right. Okay, Ontario is set to replace Dr. David Williams as the chief medical officer. Oh, yes. <laughs> no. Oh, God. Just let me choke there for a second. Um, media report says Ontario <laughs> is replacing. <laughs> scoozy, scoozy. Media reports say Ontario is replacing its chief medical officer of health. More than a year into the COVID-19 pandemic, multiple anonymous sources told the Toronto Star that Dr. Kieran Moore will replace Dr. Williams as the province top doctor. Now, it is said that he was supposed to retire, that Ford asked him to stay on a little bit longer. The doctor, the doctor said, yeah, okay, I'll stay. But then other sources are saying that he is getting um, a lot of negative feedback with his way of, of, of how he's handled the a pandemic that no one's ever handled before. Yeah. Let's yeah. put it bluntly. Over to you. Okay. Um, so yeah, so Ontario now is taking steps to make it a more affordable <coughs> and easier to visit our provincial parks. Um, so basically what they're saying, um, they're going to be providing free day use permits at 115 provincial parks from Monday to Thursday until September 2nd and this will start on June 7th. Visitors will also be able to guarantee access to 17 select provincial parks to avoid long lineups during popular and busy visitation times by obtaining a daily vehicle permit in advance. Doing so will help avoid crowding, helping to make it safer for the public to enjoy the provincial parks. Okay, so, and then to further enhance recreational opportunities for Ontarians, Ontarians the Ministry is also implementing another, uh, well, several other initiatives, including upgrading more electrical campsites while also expanding and improving roofed accommodations such as cabins and yurts. I just love that word. Yurts. Yurt. 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 Um, over the next four years. Uh, they're also inviting the private sector to submit their most innovative yeah, ideas for new recreation experiences they can deliver at parks with the best ideas receiving support through seed money and creating a one-stop shop for all local, regional, provincial, and national park recreation opportunities in Ontario. Very Just good. a reminder, Ontario parks are currently open to the public for local day use activities only, such as walking and hiking. Yeah. As part of the province's roadmap <coughs> to reopen, overnight stays in Ontario parks, including campsites and in cabins, yurts, and cottages, mm -hmm. will be permitted when the, provinces, when the province reaches okay. step one of the roadmap to reopen. So we're not that far away. Awesome. So just quickly, the two federal government sources, um, Canada and U.S., our sources are saying the exemption with let teams in the Stanley Cup 
Hunt uh, entered Canadian teams, vice versa, across country. Um, again, I will just state that it better be the blue and white team as the, the, the ones who are victorious this evening and are those the ones who need uh, the uh, travel restrictions lifted or else there will be a lot of tears coming out of my home. And uh, again, I apologize really? to my neighbor because there will be a lot of, of screaming. Teeth. Go on. Go, least go. We'll be back at 1 o'clock. We have news this hour at the top of each hour today. Don't miss it. Have a good morning.